I'm reading these stories about you and the media has destroyed you um, o o over the years. Um, I picked the, the most biting quote, and I've, this is from 2011, and it goes, um, the Bush brothers put on a sad downward spiral of a display reminiscent of two three-year-olds fighting over who will get the last cupcake. Flipping out, flipping off, tearing a transcript in a reporter's face, wrecking people under caution. Kyle Busch should be parked for this race and maybe the rest of the season. Being benched, sponsors withdrawing, and then showing all the regret of someone who'd accidentally stepped on a daffodil. Looking back on that now, like, what do you think about that period? Um, yeah, I don't know. You can have any excuse you want. It happened, right? So there's no excuse that it didn't happen. Why did it happen? I don't know. I mean, I look at it right now with my son, Brexton, who's five years old, and, and we're trying to teach him how to lose better. Like, he really? absolutely hates to lose. Like, just a couple weeks ago, he finished second in a race, and he was crying, like hysterically crying that he didn't win. So your wife, Sam, was interviewing you for something, and you made the, the comment to her. You're like, I, I mean, he kind of gets really upset when he loses, and I didn't teach him to lose that way. It's just hereditary. That, it's, it's hereditary. We have a problem, hereditary, right? Um, it's a blending of, of my dad's tenacity and his attitude. Uh, my mom is, is the social butterfly. Uh, she's like the life of the party. Uh, you know, we watched racing all the time. And there's a guy, Dale Earnhardt Sr., that was the intimidator on TV. And, and the way he drove, the way he talked, the way he acted, uh, you know, and then the influences of movies in racing. Uh, Days of Thunder came out in the early 90s, and NASCAR just seemed to blossom after that. And to this day, still, my little brother, and his nickname, Rowdy, it came from Rowdy Burns, a character on Days of Thunder, and he races in his spare time with the number 51 on his car. We give so much to what we do and the sport and racing cars and who we are that a lot of our emotion in failure comes out in an entirely wrong fashion. The, the quote about me uh, crashing a guy under caution was I had felt wronged by this particular guy over and over and over again. And so I was fl like flat out, I'm done, I'm sick and tired of it. I am, gonna, I am gonna destroy you right now. And I did it. And that's what happened, you know? And that same guy cost me a shot at a championship in the Bush series back in 2004, but nobody remembers that, but I do, you know? So am I vindicated for doing that? No, but. I sometimes see blinders on him and that he's so driven to go get that checkered flag that then reminds me of my dad on when he went to the racetrack. We were there to win. We weren't there to make friends. To what extent for you was there a turning point or a wake up call or at minimum some sort of understanding of the extent to which you could take it without causing problems for yourself? I think the biggest thing is I've had to learn how to, and this is crazy and this is probably a bad thing, but Honestly, I've had to learn how to um, care less. Really? Yeah. Like, it's not about learning how to lose better. To me, it's about learning how to care less about losing, which it, there's a fine line there because it can bleed over to caring less about racing in general. Honestly, I feel like I'm to a point now where if I go any farther, then I might as well just be done. I read in a story that you basically have a guy that needs to be paid back folder and a guy that's been good to me folder. Uh, elaborate on that. Well, so when you have guys that, that race you well, race you clean, they always treat you with respect on the racetrack, that goes, that goes both ways, you know, that's mutual. Uh, and there's that folder of guys. And then there's the other folder of guys where whenever they get to you, they run into you, they door slam you, they knock you out of the way, they basically just whatever, right? And so you want to do the same thing back to them. I don't think there's a race car driver out there that doesn't have those two folders. How would you describe his personality to somebody who's never met him before? Well, it depends. Um, I think like if you're at the racetrack and it's right before the race, you get, you know, race day, Kyle. 
Um, he's focused, he's driven, he's not listening to you at all because in his head, he's running through every scenario. How can you tell when he's not listening to you? Oh, his eye, just like blank. Or I'll say something, he's like, what? Did you hear anything I said the last five minutes? He's like, no, not listening. So now, I mean, this far into it, I just know I'm like niving to ask you anything important on race day. But in the beginning, I was like, a little bit annoyed, but now I'm like, I get it. But then if you get him at home, I mean, he's easygoing, he's fun, he's carefree, he's funny. I mean, I think, you know, now with Brexton, there's a whole new side and watching him be a dad is amazing. You said, I'm pretty much my own worst critic, which is kind of bad to be. Uh, how so? I hate losing more than I enjoy winning. And even in a win, there's things that I look back on on wins and I'm like, that could have been better. So like to me, maybe it's because I, I'm too much of a perfectionist and I, I can always look at the negatives to everything instead of the positives to things. Do you, do you think that's bad though? It's, it's turned me into this. Right, I, I mean, I was gonna say. I don't it's, think it's a bad right. thing. It's just a way of figuring out how to control all of that, harness all of that, use all of that to your advantage. And I've gotten a little bit better and a little bit smarter of that over the years. Um, but definitely in my younger years, I was, I was not as um, charismatic.